Hello and welcome to the Savvy Corner. If you are new here, my name is Alisa and I would like to personally welcome you to my channel where you can expect to find videos on personal and business finances, financial well-being and money mindset. If you're not new, thanks for stopping by again. If it was the title of this video that attracted you here, then I assume you have a business and you'd like it to generate more money for you. If that's the case, you are in the right place because in this video, I will share with you five tips on how to increase your business revenue. Not only that, but at the end, I have not one, but two bonuses for you. So make sure you watch this video until the end if you don't wanna miss those. So you want to make more money. That's fair enough, most of my clients do. And the first thing I ask them is the same thing I will ask you. What is more? How much more money would you like to make? This is super important. And if you've watched my previous video on achieving financial goals, which I will link for you on the screen and in the description box, you will know that I encourage you to have 100% clarity on your goals. So start by quantifying what more means. Put a figure to it. All right, now you have a number to work towards. Now, let's look at how you can go about making this extra money. Before we do that though, I'd like to say that the five tips I will share with you are likely to be relevant for most businesses, but as you can imagine, they might not apply to your business 100%. So instead of seeing them as hard and fast rules for revenue increase, I'd like to suggest that you see these tips as best practice if you want. Now that that's out of the way, let's jump straight into the tips. The first tip is to give more. This might sound counterintuitive, but you have to show your clients how you can help and deliver value to them before they pay you. Please don't confuse this with working for free. What I'm talking about here is the concept of results ahead of time, which I learned from one of my coaches, Brooke Castillo. If a prospect can get results from you before they pay you, then they will be more inclined to get their wallet out. In order to do that, you need to make sure that you put in front of your clients insightful and relevant information and value in the form of written content, podcasts and videos, workbooks and tools, speeches and webinars. Don't be afraid of giving away too much information or too much value. What people mostly struggle with is the implementation of that knowledge, of that information. And that's where you come in and that's what they will pay you for. Similarly, if you are selling a product, giving away free samples to demonstrate that the product works will mean that people are more inclined to buy the full size because they got results from the sample. The more you give, the more you get. The second tip is to build assets. Identify the unique selling point of your business and start building assets around it. Let's talk about assets for a second. What are they? The formal definition of an asset is that of a resource controlled by the entity and from which future economic benefits are expected to flow to the entity. Now that definition is a bit jargon heavy but what it's trying to say is that an asset is something that is yours, something that you own, which is likely to generate money for you in the future if you want to sell it or use it in some way. You probably already have assets in your business, the building that you work from, the phone that you use, your computer, any equipment that you might use. However, the assets that I'm talking about are the ones that make your brand unique. Everyone has a phone and a computer to work from, but what is it that is specific to your business that is an asset to you? What I'm talking about here are intellectual property rights, ebooks or books, webinars, programs, courses. The more unique assets you have, the more you will be able to leverage them to make more money in your business. This strategy is no quick win. 
But in the long term, it is definitely worth it because it can turn into one or several sources of passive income. And not only that, but the assets that you build will give you the competitive advantage on the market and the social proof that you need to back up your work. Tip number three is to collaborate. There might be businesses out there whose clients might benefit from your services or products and vice versa. The idea here is to have an open mind and a blue ocean approach, i.e. there's enough business and enough clients for everyone. Now, some of these businesses might be in direct competition to you. That's okay, you can still collaborate. But you have to make sure that your proposition for collaboration benefits both parties and is well thought through. Moreover, if you have built assets in your business, you are well placed for collaborations because you will bring a unique signature point of view to the table, even if your collaborator is part of the same industry as you are. Another type of collaboration is affiliation with businesses or brands whose products or services you can recommend for a commission. These can be books, courses, digital products, physical products, and so on. There are plenty of videos on affiliate marketing on YouTube, so I encourage you to watch some of those if you're not familiar with the concept. Be creative and even bold in your approach and package together an offering that is really valuable for your target market. So please don't just recommend random stuff that your audience is not interested in. Make an effort and be intentional about the products or services that you recommend. And perhaps an unnecessary thing to mention, but I will mention it anyway. Please make sure that you are happy with the quality of the products or services that you are recommending and with the reputation of the brands that you choose to associate with. Because your own reputation could be at stake, you want to be extra diligent when you choose who to associate with and what products to recommend. Tip number four is to review your prices. When was the last time you had a look at your prices? You could be jeopardizing your efforts in other areas of your business, such as production, sales, marketing, business development, if you are not charging the right price to make it worth it financially. Now, depending on the area that your business operates in, you might not have a lot of leeway in this respect because your prices might be dictated by regulation. But if that's not the case, please make sure there aren't any other limits that you place on yourself. As a financial coach, I hear stories about prices all the time. Who am I to put my prices up? My clients can't afford to pay this price. This product or service just doesn't sell for more. I will lose existing clients if I put my prices up, etc., etc. I will say one thing. Stop assuming what your client is able and willing to spend in order to get rid of a problem. Your business is helping them solve something that's problematic for them. And to be able to get rid of that problem can be extremely motivating. So stop assuming that people won't pay money in order to get rid of a problem that's big enough for them. One more thing about pricing. Did you immediately switch your mobile phone network the moment you received a text that their prices are going up in line with RPI, which stands for Retail Price Index? No, of course you didn't, because all providers put their prices up and RPI and inflation applies to you just as much as it does to them. The fifth and final tip is to invest in your business. This ties in with tip number one of giving more, but it applies in a different way. It means spending time, money, effort, and attention by investing into good processes, systems, tools, and people. And by people, I also mean you as the business owner. Your business can only grow to the extent that you can. So please don't neglect yourself 
as the most important asset that your business has. Your health and well-being, your mental health and your skills and knowledge are all aspects that you should be focusing on as absolutely necessary for your business's success. And there you have it. Five tips on how to increase your business revenue. At the beginning of the video, I told you that I have two bonuses for you. And here's the first one. I created a workbook to go with this video and I'll put the link to that workbook in the description box below. It will prompt you to think about how you could implement these five tips into your own business. The second bonus is an extra tip on how you can make more money in your business. And that is by managing your relationship with money. The way you treat your own money is likely to be reflected in the way that you treat your business finances. There's definitely a connection between the two. And if you can't manage your relationship with money, you won't be able to manage your business finances in a way that is conducive of making more revenue. A lot of the financial decisions that we make are based on the feelings that we have around money. And sometimes those feelings are negative. If you'd like to know more about how to deal with negative feelings around money, you might want to stay tuned for my next video in which I will discuss this topic in more detail. So hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you don't want to miss that video. That's it for today. I hope you enjoy these tips. And if you intend to apply them to your own business or maybe have some other tips that I haven't mentioned, please leave those in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.